Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Thomas the Apostles Church for our Mass for the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our scripture readings can be found starting on page 204 in the breaking bread in front of you. Thank you for the gift of your presence here. We put ourselves in the Lord's presence at this time. I'd ask you to take out your breaking bread, turn to number 550, and join in singing our opening hymn. Sing a new song, number 550. Peace of God's kingdom, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. 
You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, and Lud, Mosek, Tubal, and Javan, to the distant coastlands that have never heard of my fame or seen my glory, and they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord, on horses and in chariots, in carts, upon mules and dromedaries, to Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord in clean vessels. Some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Praise Praise God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the disciple of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet latter, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet, that what is lame may not be disjointed, but healed. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus passed through the towns and villages teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many I tell you will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then you will stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, 
you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west and from the north and the south and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, this week we have rather harsh words from Jesus in the Gospel. The ones, the uh, question given from the crowd that he was teaching on his way to Jerusalem was Will only a few be saved? And Jesus goes beyond the question and says, strive to enter through the narrow door. Door is a better uh, translation than gate. Door is smaller, more defined, and it fits in the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible, which I prefer. Anyway, so strive to enter. And the Greek word for strive is agonizomai. Agonizomai, agony. It's striving. It's tough. Okay. So we have that. Then last week, the gospel was, remember that one? Jesus said, I've come to set the earth on fire and how I wish it were blazing and people are going to be split. I'm not bringing peace but division. And get this, when he says, from now on a household will be divided, three against two, two against three, father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Which means neither party wants to get together. If it's father against son, son against father, they don't want to get together. Dad doesn't say, I want the old kid to come back. No. They both would just as soon stay apart. Same with mother and daughter. So we talk about that and we say, what? is Jesus talking about here? You know? Am I doing okay? You know, I'm kind of with the guys. Hey, hey, hey. Lord, open the door for us. He says, I do not know you. And they say, hey, hey. Uh, We ate with you, and you taught in our streets. Wait a sec. Like, No. And if we add that to what happened last week, we say, is there any hope? But to bring us a little sense of consolation, a little bit of consolation, chapter 13, you might want to read the whole chapter. I'll give you a little highlights from it, from last week, end of last week's gospel, the end of chapter 12 of St. Luke's gospel. And this is in the middle of 13, toward the end, actually. Between these two passages from last week and this week, where Jesus is talking about division and then talking about striving to enter through the narrow door, some things happen, and it's important. We're in St. Luke's Gospel here, remember. Jesus speaks of some people come up to him, and they're wondering, you know, about that division, not peace, but division. And they ask him, well, what, about, what happened about those Galileans who were killed, that Pilate killed, and mixed their blood with their sacrifices they brought to the temple? Boy, that was sacrilegious. He, they say, what's going to happen to those folks? And, or, or the people that were killed when a tower fell on them. What's going to happen to those folks? Did they, what did they do wrong? And Jesus said, you will perish the same way unless you repent, unless you have a change of heart. Now, some people may think, well, if I have a change of heart and repent, I won't get killed and a tower won't fall on me. No, 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 that's not what he's saying. So you've got to change your attitude about how you're going to approach your life. That's what repenting is. And then he goes past, he gives a parable of an unfruitful fig tree, and he talks about the owner wanting to chop down because it wasn't bearing fruit. And the owner says, give me a year or so, I'll fertilize it, I'll hoe around it, we'll try to get it to grow. And then if it doesn't produce fruit after a while, you can cut it down. Then comes one of the best incidences, and we don't, we don't get it in the Sunday 
liturgy, but it's good. Jesus is teaching in the synagogue, and they bring in a woman who's bent over. She's been crippled, bent over, and can't stand up straight for 18 years. So Jesus, he touches her. And says she's a faithful person, and she straightens up. And this ticks off the synagogue leader who says, look, pal, we've got six days that you can heal people. This is the Lord's day. You do not heal on the Sabbath. Jesus challenges the synagogue leader. You'll have to read it. You'll get the full picture. And then he speaks of the kingdom of God being like a mustard seed, small seed that grows into a fairly large bush that birds can use it to nest in and, and, and there can be some shade for the animals. And then the kingdom of God is like a woman who measures, who puts leaven in three measures of flour. We're talking a gal that bakes not one just making stuff for a house. Three measures are measure. They're big ones, okay? Then we come to this passage where Jesus is saying, you know, some, he's teaching. He's on his way to Jerusalem. He's been doing that for a number of, a uh, good share of St. Luke's Gospel since chapter 9 anyway. And they say, well, how are they all going to be saved? Meaning, are all of us faithful Jews going to be saved? Because no one else on us is going to be saved. Thank you. And Jesus says no. He doesn't say no. He doesn't give a number. We've, got, we've heard the numbers. But Jesus, don't you know? Revelation says there's 144,000. Latest word I got on that 144,000. There's 143,798 already in heaven. That means there's 202 left. And we all know the 535 people in the Congress are going to go to heaven anyway. So what, what's going to happen? Who is not going to make? We're not going to make. Well. <laughs> Don't get too literal on this. The church used to do literal. The church had a literal interpretation of the scriptures for like, I think up to the to the 18th century. Then they started to realize it wasn't... There's parts of it you can take literally, but a lot of it you don't because they're teaching tools and parables are teaching tools and all these things are teaching tools and they work. But you say, well, do we got a chance? Well, we do have a chance because Jesus is saying this. He says, Try to en strive to enter the, the narrow door. And... He's going through the double doors. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> I don't want the wide way. Okay. Uh, and he, Jesus says, enter the narrow door. door. And then, then he says, there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. And you'll see the patriarchs, Abraham and the prophets, enter and you won't you won't you will see them enter and then you'll see people from the east and west and from the north and south which are non-jews at that time so and you know what I try to see how we can apply this to our lives in my life as i you know encountered people that were on fire with the lord they'd ask me have you accepted jesus as your personal lord and savior you know, those kind of folks. Said, so if you haven't, you're not going to make it. And the Jews aren't going to make it because they haven't accepted Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior. Well, you can ask those people, have you really read the scriptures? Have you read the scripture? Have you read what happens in St. Luke's Gospel today? He's saying, he's not saying that they're not going to make it. He says, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the prophets make it. They were all lovers of of the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament. And we are people who are drawn here because 
God calls us. And we encounter, we encounter God in the sacred mysteries when we gather here. And it's not just one, it's many mysteries. Eucharist is powerful. And God invites us here. That's a, power, that's a wonderful thing. Look, they say, oh, I come here on my own. And there's many that do. And a lot of people come in, and it's those same people that would say, have you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? If you haven't, you know, Catholics, you know, you're, you're going to make it. And he said, well, I went to your church, and they're, and they're reading those books. They're reading the, the right prayers, you know. I'd rather, I'd rather, you know, speak from, be moved by the Spirit. Well, you know, there's words, polyphony, polyphony, many voices. When we gather together, and, and if there's a polyphony, that means it's harmonious music. And if we're looking for the ideal liturgy, and you know what, I'll get, I gotta give credit to Carolyn in here. We do pretty darn good here at St. Thomas. For liturgy. And if people are here and they say, well, I really don't, don't like this and you ain't going to get me to... That's fine. The ritual calls us in. And the ritual, what's important is to, to, to experience it as, as an action, as an encounter that is it's set in one way on the surface where it is, there is an order to it because liturgy is ordered and it is the work of the people. That's a great definition for it. And it takes work. And if we perform the ritual and respond to God's call, God calls us first when God says, I am with you and he says it through the presider, me tonight. The Lord be with you. Or the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And the people say, the answer, and, and with your spirit. Let's let the Lord be with all of us. That is powerful. And that is a prayer that has been going on and it's prayed together, so there's power in being together. Now, I've been to their churches where they're speaking in tongues. It's, you, you, you feel the energy, you feel the energy, but you can call what we do polyphony or even a symphony because it's ordered. What they have is cacophony, noise on the surface. Now, it, might, it might move people, and that might be fine. But when it's ordered, we can be open and our hearts can be open to where they can be changed. But we've got to be here. And it's got to be ordered and it takes work. You know, there's a story of a rabbi who was teaching the students to study. It was, it was, in, it was in our Give Us This Day this month, this last month. And he says, if you study God's word, the word will be written on your heart. And then one of the students says, hey, Rabbi, shouldn't the word be written in your heart? And the rabbi says, no, if you only God can put it in your heart. If you study and reflect on God's word, it's on your heart. It is only when your heart is broken, bursting open with joy, or broken through sorrow or grief that the Word of God comes in. Get it? This is what discipleship's about, brothers and sisters. We share each other's hurts, we rejoice together, we're drawn by God together. And we find that when we come together, 
and use this ritual, it can reach us all on different levels. And there are certain things that can draw us to the Lord which, which we can be port, important for us at certain times in our lives. But there's a saying from the, from the Buddhists, which is a very deep truth, is once you cross the river, you no longer need the canoe. But a lot of people like to carry that stuff with them. We call that stuff baggage. It's important at some times, but later on, we don't need it. And we trust as God is walking with us, as Jesus is walking with the disciples and the crowds to Jerusalem. Jesus is with them. But are they listening? And that's the point where the hearts need to be open. And we need to realize the power of gathering, the power of reflecting on God's word, as Mary did in the gospel a few weeks ago. Mary chose the better part, being opening and listening to God's word. Can we do that? And can our hearts be open when we bring our lives here each week when we gather from, for Eucharist? Everybody's got a different story. Not everybody needs a canoe today. Some may. Some may need other things. But our prayers join together, making for a powerful response to God's call. And God is with us in a powerful way through word and sacrament. And it's God who unites us, whether through word or through sacrament, and all effectively carry God's grace. And brothers and sisters, that is worth saying amen to, and that is rejoicing in the Lord. Let us profess our faith by praying the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten from not made, unsubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith in God's mercy and fidelity, we bring our prayers before the Lord. For the church throughout the world, may we steadfastly proclaim and uphold the dignity of all human life in all stages and circumstances. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, May people of faith gather together to provide for the needs of refugees and those who are displaced from their homes by natural disasters. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are facing difficult choices, 
particularly about health issues, relationships, or employment. May the Holy Spirit guide them to inner freedom, integrity, and wholeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For students, staff, and teachers, as the new school year begins, may they grow in knowledge, wisdom, and virtue, and be kept safe from all harm in the months ahead. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, may we respond to God's call with renewed integrity and resolve to serve and share our belief with all who hunger for Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may the sacrament of anointing and our community's compassion bring them healing and strength, especially Dean Knutson, Nick Schneider, and John Murphy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, May those who have grown strong in their relationship with Jesus recline forever at table with him in the kingdom of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Betty Severson, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, you invite the whole human race to enter through the narrow door of the cross that leads to the Paschal Feast of New Life. May we be among those Jesus recognizes when we knock at the door of your feet. We humbly ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our preparation song is number 438, O oh God, You Search Me, number 438. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his whole church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, 
Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gift of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her husband, St. Joseph, with St. Thomas and your blessed apostles, with the glorious martyrs and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael and Jeffrey, our bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 337, One Bread, One Body, number 337.
Number 595. At this time, I'd ask the community ministers, the homebound, please come forward. My dear friends, go forth in peace as the sick and homebound members of our community bearing the word of life in the body of Christ together with the assurance of our love and concern. May these gifts help strengthen our absent brethren in their communion with us. We humbly make our prayer through Christ our Lord.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Got a few announcements. Our theme uh, for the coming week is humility. Please check out the preparation page on page 9 of our bulletin on paper or online. And if uh, you, are, you know anybody interesting in becoming Catholic, the classes start uh, August 28th, next Sunday after the 10.30 a.m. Mass. If you need more information, please call Mindy at the church office. Fall Bible studies will be start, starting up again in three weeks. Tuesday slot, time slot starts September 13th from 9.45 to 11.15 in the morning. Uh, the Wednesday time begins September 14th from 7 to 8.45 p.m. The study this time is 1 Corinthians, the church and the Christian community. Please call the church office by this Friday, August 26th, to get registered and be sure that you are, are receive the ordered materials. Okay. Availability forms for a liturgical ministry for November through January will go out next weekend. Please look ahead on your calendars and get it in so Gina can get the ministry calendar together well before November. Gina asked that availability forms be into her by Friday, September 9th. So you got a couple weeks on that one. Registration forms for both religious education and youth ministry have been mailed out and can also be found online on our church website. Please get those forms into the church office as soon as you can so we can be well prepared to uh, get off to a great year in both religious ed and youth ministries. Uh, three big save the date events coming up. Uh, parish picnic will take place after the 10.30 a.m. mass on Sunday, September 18th. We'll need salads and desserts from you for that great day and St. Thomas will provide the meat and beverages. Family Promise will need volunteers for evening meal and overnight volunteers for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, September 22nd through the 24th. And the ministry fair will take place after the Mass is on the weekend of September 24th and 25th. So plan on visiting, discerning, and enjoying refreshments. We all need people involved in the various ministries, uh, and you'll find that out in the ministry, ministry fair. Otherwise, we got... Uh, Getting ready. We had a mass for the teachers and the administration for schools this last Thursday. So the kids are all getting excited and the parents say that this is the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. As we go forth, let us sing number 741, A Rightful Place, number 741.